glory. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee. James 4, 7. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm Don. Glory to God. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I just praise you. Let's just take a moment just to say thank you, Lord, for the things that you do for us. We praise you, God, for who you are. We thank you, Lord God, for this word this morning. And I thank you, Lord God, for my brothers and sisters. And ask Holy Spirit that you would salt and pepper us, that you would season us, that you would prepare our hearts to be able to stand firm, to be able to resist whatever comes our way, whatever tries to bowl us down, whatever tries to knock us down. And we would be strong in you. And we would be men and women and children of character. We would have a godly character to be able to rise up to any challenge and resist any situation that may try to come against you, Lord God, and us. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I declare life over you. I declare strength over you. I declare confidence and boldness over you this morning. That whatever you do, do in the name of Jesus. And you'll bring life. Glory to God. And that's what it's all about. Praise the Lord. Ah, glory. This morning the word is about resist. Resist those things that come against your walk. I'm not just talking about temptations, although most of it probably is about temptations. At any rate, I'm just going to flip this definition out here and say, the definition of resist is to exert oneself so as to counteract or defeat opposition. We are going to be overcomers through the blood of the Lamb. We're not overcomers in our own flesh, but we are overcomers through the blood of the Lamb. And there's three areas in our lives that we need to overcome. Number one, the flesh. Number two, the world. Number three, the enemy. And several months ago, let's see, well over a year now, I was, I was going through some things, and I was on the trail with the Lord, and the Lord said to me that uh, you have three things against you. Number one, your flesh. Too many people give the enemy too much credit. <laughs> Number two, the world. Too many people give the enemy too much credit. <laughs> Number three, the enemy. Too many people give the enemy too much credit. The kingdom of darkness is defeated. The world is defeated. Jesus said, I will overcome the world. <laughs> and your flesh is defeated. <laughs> we, we are walking powerfully. We just need to be able to see these things that we overcome through Jesus. Those three areas in our lives that come against us are our flesh. It's our mindset. It's our thinking. The world. It's what's, what the world is telling you is okay. Which really isn't okay. It's going to land us in a world of hurt. And then the enemy, he just comes around from time to time to check on it and see what's going on. He, he roams. <laughs> he doesn't stay in one place unless he can find a home to move into. And these are all scriptural and, and biblical things. You just need to look them up. And in your life, where's your biggest struggle? And who are you blaming it on? The Lord, when he was telling me this, he says, all three judge you guilty and condemn you. But, my judgment triumphs over that judgment. I died for your sins. I rose again for your sins. Actually, he rose again to bring us into life. He died for our sins and then he rose again to bring us into life. The Lord just reminded me of that. As he didn't, write, he didn't become raised for our sins. Our sins died and were buried with Jesus. Jesus took our sins on on the cross. And when he rose, he rose victoriously. That makes us victorious. So there you have it. Right there, the Lord just spoke it to me. Showed it to me. It's amazing what the Lord says to me and how quick he says it to me. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And the Lord wants to speak to you that way. He wants you to know this morning that you are an overcomer because of Him. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Resist your flesh. 
it will be subdued by your spirit. Resist the world and the temptation to follow what the world's doing. But we, we have to have things in their proper order and their proper perspective for true growth to come to us. Number one, Jesus is Lord. <laughs> not us, not the world, not the enemy, not anything that we can see around us. Jesus is Lord. That's why He's Lord of all. He created all. He's Lord of all. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. <laughs> the cattle on, on a thousand hills belong to God. We belong to God. He spoke us into existence before the foundations of the world. He prophesied you. He put your personality in you. He didn't put your personality in me. He put your personality in you. And there's things about us we don't like. We have to overcome. That's overcoming the flesh. That's overcoming the mindset. And uh, my first scripture about flesh is Galatians 5, 16 and 17. It says, But I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. What do you want to do? Do you, do you just pay lip service to being a believer? Or do you really say, I want to do these things in Christ because He strengthens me for all tasks? Think about that for a minute. If you're paying lip service to it, repent. <laughs> The things you want to do are, are to allow the Spirit of God to move in you, to build a city in you, to lift others up out of the condition that they're in. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. So if your flesh is living for, for the world and the enemy, because those three things will come into agreement. They'll align just like planets. And try to overcome your spirit. And, and, and try and try and get you to come into agreement with those negative things. Because in our flesh, there's nothing good. No good thing dwells in our flesh. <laughs> and that's our mindset. No good thing dwells in a bad mindset. The heart of man is exceedingly wicked. Jesus wouldn't trust himself to anybody except for the Father. He knew what was in the heart of man. Go read it in John chapter... Uh, one or two. <laughs> I'm not going to look it up right now. But at any rate, we've got to understand that our mindset has to be changed. There has to be a changing of the mindset here. We've got to see that we are an overcomer through Jesus. That, that the things that we declare over ourselves actually do affect us. If I walk around saying... <laughs> I don't like these people. I don't like these people. I don't like these people pretty soon. I'm not going to like these people. <laughs> or, I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person. I'm going to feel like a bad person. If I begin to declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, I'm going to begin to feel like I'm in right standing with my God. If I walk around saying, I'm a son of the Most High. I am royalty. I am a priest. I am a king. I walk in that authority. I will walk in that authority. If I say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world, I'm going to start believing that. But if I begin to talk negative things over myself, and I'm not talking some new age crap, right from the pits of hell, a, 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 a mimicking, a copying, <laughs> if you will, of what's really going on in the kingdom of heaven, if I walk around with that kingdom of heaven mindset, I'm going to be powerful and victorious. I'm not going to be weak and lumpy. I'm not going to change my mind every five minutes about who I am. I'm not going to walk around with condemnation feeling less than. Brothers, if your heart condemns you, or beloved, if your heart condemns you, God is greater than your heart. Perfect love casts out all fear. If I walk around afraid all the time, I am going to be living in fear. But if I know and I set my hope on something more eternal, more solid than anything on this earth, 
That's where that's where my mindset's gonna be. If I if I refuse to to keep God in a box that He's sitting on a cloud getting ready to beat me for everything I say, and I say that my God loves me. above all things, my God loves me. He died for me. I'm seated in heavenly places. That's where I'm gonna be. No ifs, ands, or buts. You can't refute that. That is the truth right there. Glory. <laughs> Put your desire in the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. You will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Woo! <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Hearts for you. Love for you. Glory to God. And then, whew, <laughs> we got the bright light of the city. Oh, the bright lights of the world, how they captivate, how they capture the latest gossip on the stars and what they're doing and who they're messing over and who's getting divorced and who's getting fat and who's getting too skinny and who's doing this to whom. We're so captivated by the world. If only I had this new car, I would just be. If only I had this. If only I had that. If I only had his wife. If I only had her husband. If I only could get this job. <laughs> if I could only beat him up. If I could only kill him. <laughs> if I only had all this money. If I only had good looks. <laughs> if only. If only. <laughs> There's a song. It's a heavy metal song. I used to love it. It's called If Only. <laughs> and and uh, if only I could have everything I want. Everything I desire. Everything that I should have. I'm so angry. I see the world and everything that they have. It's so golden and glittery. And it's greener on the other side of that fence. <laughs> and in James 4, 1 through 4, it says, What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, so you murder, you covet and cannot obtain so you fight and quarrel you do not have because you do not ask you ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly and spend it on your passions you adulterous people do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God there are therefore whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God Woo, that's pretty strong I'd say <laughs> but can you see it? Can you see it when you watch something on TV? Now they got all these reality shows on there. Battle Island! Naked Island! Survival Man! <laughs> and, and, and then, the, uh, let's see, then, then we got the Pawn Star! <laughs> In Las Vegas, in New York, in L.A., and then we've got Storage Shed Wars. <laughs> and we got all these reality things, and people want to be, we got these Survivor Series, you know, build a castle, because they're coming. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I, I just, I can't help but just, look at this stuff and kind of laugh sometimes. I think it's funny and we should be laughing about it. The world should not absolutely be any place that we want to be living. We should have our mind set on Christ and want to be living for Him. Glory to God. Ooh, I'm enjoying this one this morning. I could just feel the Spirit on this. And glory to God, there are those out there that, that want to dress like the world. They go into church dressing like the world. And, and one of my pet peeves is women who go to church with really low-cut shirts on. That really is a pet peeve of mine. 
Where is the modesty? I'm, I'm just saying, if, if you're one of them, you need to stop because there's men like me out there. Now, I'm, I'm, I do my best best to avoid those situations. If I see it, I walk away from it. I won't even go near it. I will absolutely refuse to go near that person. Yeah, and we need to be aware of what we do. If we're if we're trying to look just like the world, we got a five hundred dollar suit on. We come into church, and we're wearing a five hundred dollar suit, and yet over here we set somebody in the back of the church because we don't want to see them or we don't want them near us because they might get our suit dirty because what they're wearing is something from the goodwill. Or if, if we don't wear our best attire and look like the world, like success, God's not going to like us. Well, let the Holy Spirit speak to you on this. It's not my job to, to convict anybody. It's just my job to just speak in the morning. Glory to God. I see an expansion coming on. Well, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Praise the Lord. We'll just see. And now, a third area... The weakest area of the links. Okay, we could, first we got the flesh we got to battle against. And that's our mindset. That's not this. That's not my hands. It's not my face. It's not my ears. It's not my hair. It's not this husk. It's my mindset. It's what I'm thinking. It's how I, I view things. It's my belief system. Then we've got the world. Looking like the world, wanting to be angry like the world, wanting to do this and that and the other thing and be exactly like the world, yet go to church and say, well, praise the Lord, look at me, I look just like the world. Okay, wanting to be like the world is the second most powerful draw. Now, the third most powerful thing is the enemy. And you notice he's the third, which means he's the weakest. Our mindsets are the most powerful influences in our lives then the world is an influence because we look at it we see the propaganda channels we begin to come into agreement with with the thinking of the world and that affects our mindset and then you have the enemy then you have the enemy who's been defeated his kingdom no longer has reign and rule over this dominion he's the uh, prince of the power of the air he lives in the second heaven just go read about this stuff. And he has no true dominion on earth anymore. It was wrestled from him when Christ died and went to hell and, and was resurrected. And he rose again. <laughs> triumphant, I may add. He rose triumphantly. And in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, it says, Finally, my brother... <laughs> let, let me try this again. Finally... My brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, having done all to stand. <laughs> Let me start that all over again, okay? Praise the Lord. I'm glad I, I don't have to be perfect here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. Actually, I'm using an ESV version versus... What I'm thinking in my mind is the King James Version, which I should have probably put that there because I would have looked at it once and I would have had it memorized. But, okay, I'm going to read it word for word here. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand, stand firm. Now the enemy really, really has a bit part to play in this because he knows, knows, it knows, that it doesn't have, if you're walking in a fleshly manner, it doesn't really have to do anything to drive your desires, your will. Because if, if you're living 
on the fence, if you're just standing on the fence, you're neither hot nor cold, right? Okay, so you've got one foot in the world, you got another foot in the body, and you're walking along that fence. One minute you're you're doing sinful, evil things, the next second you're you're doing heavenly things. Okay, you're walking along, you're you're lukewarm. He doesn't really have to do anything because your your flesh is going to motivate and dictate what you're going to do anyway. You you go to church just because you want to be seen in that life. But when nobody sees you, you're living this other life. Okay. Now, the enemy only has to come around checking on you every now and then. He goes away and does his thing. He comes back. Oh, no! Is there going closer to that? So he brings a temptation in to pull you out. Help, has the world help, help keep you on that fence? Because he'd rather have you lukewarm and, and unpowerful and uneffective than he would have you on the full side of the fence where you're just powerful and you're walking and your authority and you know and you just look at the enemy and say be gone in the name of Jesus the Lord rebuke you you know the enemy has no power over you unless you give it to him that's the cool thing before Christ when Adam had given up his authority the enemy had nothing but control and power you didn't have any choice I was I was tempted to look at that that woman with lust. <laughs> no, it was like you look at her. Oh! <laughs> but now it's ooh, see that? No, I don't. <laughs> and you walk on. That's how much power the enemy has. But if our mindsets aren't set on Christ, if, if we're not walking by the Spirit, we're walking in the flesh. And if we're walking in the flesh, we're looking to see what the world's doing, not what God's doing. And the enemy loves that because he doesn't have to try and fight us. Because he knows he's going to get his butt kicked. If we're walking in the Spirit, he has no authority over us. And if we know he doesn't have any authority over us, <laughs> he's defeated. Plain and simple. He's just a small minor part. He's an annoyance. He's a fly flying around trying, trying to get you to listen to him. Listen to me! Listen to me! <laughs> you know, it's like, go! Now in Jesus' name. So I just want to say thank you for coming and sitting with me this morning. And uh, I just want to say again, it's our mindset. Then it's the world. Then it's the enemy. All three are going to try and judge you. Guilty and condemn you. But Jesus says, I'm greater than that. My judgment is true. My judgment is truth. And I declare you free. And right now I declare you free in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Lord God, that we don't have to live by those three things. We only have to come before you and live. That our life is really in you. I thank you for that. And I ask Holy Spirit... That you would speak to those that are struggling in those areas, Lord. That this message would speak to them. And that the things that come from my flesh would drop. And the things from your spirit would go on. The snowball would, would blow us over. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Glory. Well, let's see what I got this morning. Now, I haven't got anything in mind. I haven't really thought about it. I may just strum or pick, I should say. It's really picking, it's not strumming. Strumming's when you... <laughs> Lord God, I really like this, this guitar, and it's, but it's getting kinda... I got a strength in my fingers, so I'm gonna ask for prayer for strengthening my fingers. to warm up.
difference. It's a wisdom in the Word of God. Practice the walk. Practice overcoming the enemy. It's not easy all the time. In fact, it's kind of hard and difficult sometimes. Praise Him. Praise Him. And thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His goodness. <laughs> Step out in faith and worship Him. Overcomer, know that you are, and we'll see you. Bye.